Speaking of communists, this week on Private Eye, we take a look at campus politics. On March 22nd and 23rd, Queen's undergraduate students voiced their opinions at the poll and voted in the affirmative to recommend to the University Council of Queen's University that Nick Day should not continue to hold office as rector. Of the 26% of students that participated in the voting, 72% voted in the affirmative, while 28% were opposed. Yet there still seems to be many unanswered questions as the process moves forward. The private eye will present both sides of the topic and investigate the conflicts moving forward. The topic of Mr. Day has been at the forefront of many heated discussions in the past couple of weeks here at Queen's, and the dialogue has made many pause and question, what is a rector? It's a very unique position actually at Queen's because it's a student position, and I think since the 70s it's always been occupied by a student. Um, so the rector is the is a one representative that that encompasses both undergraduates and graduates and professional students. Uh, so they so they transcend the boundaries of AMS and include the SGPS as well. And they advocate on behalf of students to a variety of bodies. And they have a, they have an ex officio position, I believe, on almost all administrative bodies. So they they have they're a voting member of the board of trustees, and they're also voting they also have an observer on Senate. And they're, they're an ex officio on a variety of other things. And so because of their large access to university administration, they're supposed to be the fundamental uh, lobby point for students to go to. So anytime there's an I issue of concern, the rector, the rector is supposed to be the champion of that. Uh, in the past, the rector has sat on the Queen Center Student Working Group. So from the AMS side, they've helped us discuss matters of the Queen Center and it moving forward. Uh, and I know that they also sit on the SGPS Council and help the SGPS with their matters as well. Despite the undergraduate votes recommending Mr. Day step down from his position, there seems to be much confusion as to protocol. Seeing since this is the first known time in Queen's history a student body has demanded the rector to step down, no one seems to know what to do. Originally, many believed that if the recommendation was cast, that it would ultimately be up to the University Council, which includes representation from both the Board of Trustees and the Senate, to make their final decision. However, this past Wednesday, Principal Wolf stated that the University Council has no power to remove the rector. While University Council bylaws outline the procedure for installing a rector after a student vote, there seems to be no policy for removing a rector. It is now up to the Executive Committee of the University Council to decide what to do next. This bizarre situation has led to more confusion and debate on the situation continues to ensue. The open letter written by Mr. Day on March 9, 2011, criticizing liberal leader Michael Ignati of statements denouncing Israel Apartheid Week sparked a whirlwind of campus-wide debate. He said that he spoke for the 20,000 Queen students and then signed a letter, rector of Queen's University, on a form which had absolutely nothing to do with Queen's University was the main problem that I've, I've noticed, and the main problem that I had with the letter. If he simply wrote a letter or an essay or anything about Israel, well, one may not agree with it, the, different, the difference would be that he wouldn't be speaking for the entire Queen's community. Here, he claimed, and I think mendaciously claimed, to be speaking for all of Queen's, which is the problem. Claim that he's being anti-Semitic has no basis. It's not grounded in anything. And I often hear this in Middle Eastern political discussions. Is there anti-Semitism in, in the Middle East or sometimes in Middle Eastern discussions? Of course there is. Anti-Semitism most certainly exists. But Israel is a state and criticizing Israel is criticizing a sovereign region. I don't have a problem with it. Even if I disagree with it, which I think is irrelevant for this discussion, I would never call such statements anti-Semitic. I don't think it's necessarily true that a rector needs to stay impartial. I believe that bringing to light an idea that is not getting enough airplay, that's not getting enough time in the public sphere, uh, is an important part of the, you know, the lives of students on campus. And to bring that light to, to bring that to light, to bring those issues and those facts to the forefront, I think is a very important thing. Um, uh, there's a lot of people that s 
speak uh, bias opinions all the time, but because they are of the majority idea, uh, they don't get as much scrutiny as someone that's trying to bring a minority idea to light. No one knows what the future holds for the rector position, and that is simply the only thing anyone seems to be sure of. This has been Rakeem Tespe for The Private Eye.